Coming up, we've got eight round heavyweight battle. Ike Ibiabuchi, if you haven't seen him, don't leave your seats. Um, and Herman Delgado, you've seen him before in heavyweight explosion most recently, fighting Jorge Valdez, very durable. And, um, you know, John, in our last heavyweight explosion show, both fights went the distance, and we had some great fights that took place afterwards with some terrific prospects. One of them was a fellow we had named Greg Pickram taking on Johnny Ruiz and Bobby Harris. And uh, so we figured we'd take a quick look here to keep everybody <laughs> abreast of what's going on with Very some quick. of the fighters. We take a look here. We thought this was going to be a long fight, perhaps the fight of the night. That's Johnny Ruiz walking away from Greg Pickram. That was the first knockdown. Greg Chalka Pickram, this was at the Roxy in Boston last month on Heavyweight Explosion. You see Pickram already holding on, trying to hold that right hand of Ruiz. Ruiz was coming up a one-round knockout loss to David Tua. This was his first fight back. They thought he might be the trial loss, and that was all they wrote for Pickram. Very disappointing loss for him, a big win and, and a big comeback for John Ruiz. Then we saw Bobby Harris against Tony Daly, another big prospect. Referee gives a standing eight count to Tony Daly over there. Harris comes flying back in. He's undefeated. And that was all they wrote. Good stoppage as well as Daly just rolling around on the ground. Bobby Harris. We'll be seeing him again, I think, possibly even in our September heavyweight explosion. John Ruiz, a lot going on for him. But now we got an eight-round heavyweight bout. Ike Ibiabuchi against Herman Delgado. The same Ike Ibiabuchi who you saw knock out Greg Pickman back in September of 95 on the Cedric Christian Sports Network. There's Big Ike, they call him the president. He's training down in Texas. Herman Delgado, his opponent tonight, key thing here and a good benchmark for, for Ike's punching power is Delgado is durable. He went the distance with Peter Smith in Nevada. He went a strong 10 rounds with Jorge Valdez back in March. But another thing to look out for tonight is he came in heavy. Delgado showed up at 222 pounds. He weighed 213 for his last fight for Valdez, 212 against Peter Smith. Now we go up for our official introductions from Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Promotions, along with Players Island Casino and Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, presents eight rounds heavyweights. Your referee for this event, from Houston, Texas, Ronnie Rolston. Introducing now the principals first in the blue corner to my left, wearing the navy blue trunks, weighing in at 222 pounds, with a professional record of 11 victories, five defeats, one draw. He has eight knockouts to his credit. He hails from El Paso, Texas. Here is Herman Delgado. Delgado. His opponent in the red corner wearing the black trunks with white accessories. He weighs in at 237 pounds. He is undefeated in 10 professional fights with eight knockouts. He hails from the great country of Nigeria. However, he makes his home now in Dallas, Texas. Here is Ike, the president, Ibiabuchi. Ibiabuchi. Okay, gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. Oh, five five and one, eight KOs. Keep in mind, Delgado's only been stopped one time, and we're fighting under Louisiana rules tonight. Ten point must system in effect, standing eight count, three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Schedule for eight rounds. In case anybody's wondering about Ike and his ring attire, if it looks familiar, he loves Mike Tyson. And you can tell just by how he carries himself, he loves Tyson's style. In fact, he went to China one time and he said everybody was calling him Tyson. He says he likes Tyson because <laughs> Tyson goes for the kill. Ike got be a Bucci. Scheduled for eight, he's never been past six. Eight of his fights by way of knockout. He went six rounds back in March of 95, and one of his fights that went the distance against Keith Walton, winning a six-round decision. Hasn't fought since May 24th when he stopped Mike Ackley in one round. Delgado's last fight was, of course, the loss 
for Jorge Valdez using a 10 round decision. Was not down in that fight. That was back in March of this year. Only stopped one time in his career and that was against Kenny Keene. Kenny Keene stopped Herman Delgado, mostly on cuts from what I've been told in the seventh round. That was in March of 95. So durable is Delgado's middle name, but again, came in at 222 pounds today. Heaviest he's been in his pro career. Mike, of course, loves that moniker, the president. He moved from uh, Nigeria only in 1993, immediately relocated to Dallas. But he wasn't informed. He thought Eisenhower was right. <laughs> president. That's why he took the name. I like Ike. He found out Ike was dead. It was like, well, his name stuck. Good he, body work there by Al Bucci. When he was 17 already, he was actually contemplating going into the army in Nigeria and watched the Douglas Tyson fight from Japan. And when he saw Buster Douglas succeed in that tremendous upset, knocking out Tyson, he said, hey, if he can do it, why can't I? I immediately decided he was going to become a professional boxer. Looks easy on TV, but so far Ike's doing very well. Again, undefeated 10-0, eight knockouts. A little under a minute to go in round number one. We're scheduled for eight. No fight of Ibiabuchis has gone the distance since March of 95. On the other hand, Delgado only stopped that one time. So it'll be a nice benchmark for Ibiabuchi if he could stop. Herman Delgado. I like Ike's patience in this early round. He's establishing his jab. He's missing a couple times with the right hand. He missed with the uppercut. But he's going to find that range soon. Good stiff jab by Ike. Right down the middle, snapping Delgado's head back. As we come to the end of round number one, been all jabbed so far from Ibiabuchi. Round two. Second round was scheduled for eight. That's Ike Ibiabuchi. He's in the black shorts. Herman Delgado in the purple. If you notice between rounds, the trainer looked familiar in Ike's corner. That was former welterweight champion of the world, Curtis Cokes. No knockdowns thus far in the fight, but a very good first round for Ike, who looks far more experienced the last time I saw him, but he, this is, I say that, tends to trip a little over his well, own legs, a little off balance there. Curtis, right still, back. Curtis still working with uh, Ike in the gym on his balance. And we saw evidence right there. He was off balance, got pushed back from a body shot. Have they mentioned that to you, that that's something that he's having a problem with, John? Well, it's something that all young fighters, of course, have to work on early on. And it's something he's continuing to work on, is to get good leverage and, and stay balanced in there. You know, a lot of fighters are successful not having good balance. Look at Tommy Hearns, how far he got. Rocky Balboa, I mean, <laughs> Nick tied that string to his well, legs to get, teach him balance. So Tommy's not going to like being linked with Rocky Balboa. <laughs> A little more than a minute gone by here in round number two. Coming to you from Players Island Casino, Lake Charles, Louisiana. TVKO and the Cedric Christian Sports Network on a heavyweight explosion. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with John Saracino. Of course, coming up, Larry Donald and Derek Roddy. I mean, Delgado just has no clue how to get on the inside to do any effective work. He tried there. Nice hook off the jab. You can't take that away from him. Caught Ike napping. But again, he's waiting for Ike to punch first, and he's getting nailed. Part of the reason Delgado gave me for why he ballooned up the 222 is that he'd been working out with weights, trying to improve his punching power. But it, I can't say that he looks overly toned, though, because of it, John. <laughs> no, I, I don't Looks like he's been at Dunkin' Donuts too much to me. I, I don't mean that as a knock. I mean, no, he's carrying weight he shouldn't be carrying. He's not uh, a big guy to begin with, and obviously he's trying to add a little extra beef. Delgado, six foot even. Ike, six foot two. Ike came in at 237 pounds. 222, the heaviest Delgado's ever been. Good straight right hand after the double jab by Ike. And now he's really working Delgado the body. Delgado's got to get off those ropes. But sooner or later, his legs are not going to carry him off those ropes. And that's what Ike wants to do. Delgado, though, a big survivor. He, I saw him take some big body shots from, from Jorge Valdez. Go the full 10. 
And, and what Valdez said to me afterwards, he just took a look in Delgado's eyes and he said, this guy wants to stay here tonight. And, and a matter of fact, that's the first time I saw Valdez fight from the outside. He said, I'll go on the outside, I'll just jab the last three rounds and win them. And Delgado knows how to survive if he gets into that mode. As we come to the end of round number two, he's getting into survival mode very early in the fight. This is round three. Heavyweights, third round scheduled for eight. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. I'd be Abuchi winning though unofficially on both scorecards. In between rounds, Chuck McGregor, who you've seen in the corner of Obed Sullivan, trying to talk to Delgado, tell him he's got to start picking those jabs off. And he's got to start throwing punches. He's got to make Ibuchi think twice about merely walking in on him. He's not done that thus far. I mean, Ike's showing almost no respect for Delgado, just moving forward, doing what he wants, when he wants. He's imposing his will, which at this point has been considerable. Ike, Ike's in the black shorts, Delgado in the purple. That's one thing Curtis Cox is trying to do, is trying to slow Ike down a little bit. Ike really wants to fight guys that are in the top 10 right now. He believes he's ready. Well, I would have to say at the moment, the best name on his record was the knockout over Greg Pickram, and we just saw Pickram get destroyed by Johnny Ruiz in one round, who got destroyed by David Tua. So if you apply those principles, you would have to think that Ike's not ready and that Curtis is, is probably giving him sound advice. However, I've got to tell you, he looks greatly improved from the last time I saw him close up. And of course, some of that is who's in front of him right now. Delgado's allowing Ike to set the entire pace and tone of the fight. Ike Ibiabuchi undefeated. He's got 10 wins, eight knockouts. Delgado, 11 and five, one draw. Some punching power, though. He's got eight knockouts. Most of them, though, came against people under 200 pounds where he started his career. Heaviest he's ever been today, 222, weighed 213 in his last fight with Valdez. Prior to that, he weighed 206. I'm not going that far back either. August 95, 206, March 96, 213. Ike trying to get that uppercut in on the inside that Delgado is open for. Interestingly enough, John, this is the heaviest Ike's been, 237 pounds today. That's the heaviest in his pro career. And don't forget, those scales are probably about five pounds over, so he's closer to two, 230, 231. Six foot two inches. Hails from Nigeria. Home of Dick Tiger, former middleweight champion. Was home of Dick Tiger, Dick passed away. About 10 years ago. And a current uh, bronze medalist just won the bronze medal down in Atlanta, Duncan Dokwari. And he's a potential fighter you could be seeing here in the future, possibly on Heavyweight Explosion Series. Actually, Ike beat Dokwari twice in 1992 and 1993. Good straight right hand. Delgado's got to get off the ropes. He doesn't want to get pinned in there. And let Ike just fell away as we're coming near the end of round number three. Another good one. He's wearing down, Arnie. All right, got the Abuchi. Round four. As we start round number four, referee Ronnie Ralston been very inconspicuous. Not a lot of holding thus far. It's been all. Ike Ibiabuchi unofficially, John, I've got a shutout for Ike three rounds to none. But interestingly enough, you listen to Curtis Cokes, he said, watch out, Delgado will make one more run at you before he's finished. Curtis has been around. He knows what Delgado is capable of trying to mount one last stand. Ibiabuchi, I'm really impressed with his poise and the fact that he's continuing to use his jab. Even though he senses he can take this guy out possibly when he wants to, he's taking his time and trying to break him down properly. And again, I, I go back to Delgado's last fight with Valdez. I remember I called that fight thinking a half a dozen times during that fight, Delgado will quit on the stool, he'll get dropped, he'll get cut, he'll look for an excuse to get out of there, and there he was at the end of round number 10. Ibi Abuchi also shows very good hand speed for a heavyweight. When he doubles on the jab, though, he's tentative. He's not making a good step in on the second jab, and, and hence the right hand's not landing. He is missing. Oh, that right landed, though. Left one jab. Great right hand lead. Oh, he missed with that uppercut. And a good thing for Delgado that he did. As well, <laughs> halfway, his head gone. Off. halfway gone in round number four. This is scheduled for eight. 
Delgado ate a mean right hand there. There also the, comes a point, too, when a guy is still in there with you and you're unable to get him out, or it starts becoming a negative for you. Well, like I said, Balthus told me after that fight, he just looked in Delgado's eyes and he said, this guy's not going home. I'm going to sit on the outside and jab and take the last three rounds and then take the decision. Ibiabuchi has a nice assortment of punches. You see him still trying to land that right uppercut on the inside. And he's getting ready to set up some power punches here, Arnie. He has that look on his face where he's saying to, him, he's saying to himself, I gotta get, I want to get this guy out of here. But you know what? The reason he can't land that uppercut on the inside is Delgado's too experienced and too shifty. You're not going to land that kind of punch on him. If you get him close at close quarters, Delgado puts the gloves up in front of his face and picks off the majority of those shots. You're right. But you won't land the clean punch, which makes you wonder why he doesn't stay inside. You see, he caught that uppercut right on the gloves, locked it beautifully. He's run the 30 seconds to go in round number four. That's Ikai Biabuchi. He's in the black shorts. Delgado in the purple. Got hit though with that overhead right. Good, Good left punch. hook to the body. Beautiful left hook to the body. He hasn't been doing enough of that. Curtis Cokes telling him, after you drop that body shot, go upstairs. Only five seconds to go in round number four. Oh! Another body shot. Can't be saved by the bell until the last round. Ronnie Ralston counting over Delgado, takes the eight count. He's going to go back to the corner. Ralston asking him. Ralston says, no, that's it. Delgado tells him he doesn't want to go on. Two body shots got Herman Delgado. It's punching in the body, and I, I'd be a boochie. And I doing something that Jorge Valdez couldn't do, Peter Smith couldn't do, and that's he stopped Herman Delgado on body shots. And if he would have done that just a little bit sooner, he got away from that. He wanted so much to establish a jab first, but once he went to that body and doubled up with that left hook, Delgado had nowhere to go but on the canvas. Well, I've got to tell you, John, in retrospect, it was good work for him. He got to experiment with that jab a little bit, trying to double up and come over with the right. He doesn't have that down just yet. We take a look at the knockdowns here. Fourth round action. Watch this left to the body. Misses this is the with uppercut. the uppercut. Nice overhand right. And there's that left hook to the body. And down to one knee goes Delgado. I.B. Abucci throws nice, straight, clean, hard punches. That's what you're seeing, and in combination, and there's that left hook. That was the second knockdown. Once he already had tapped that side, all he had to do was touch it lightly. Delgado went down again, and he wanted no more. Um, you know, you take a look. He got some good work in, tried to work that uppercut, learned that he couldn't do it yet, and we're going to get our official announcement from Mark Giro. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 2 minutes, 59 seconds of the fourth round. The winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, I, the president, Ibiabuchi. Ibiabuchi. Well, he drops Herman Delgado twice in the fourth round. He improves to 11 and 0. That's his ninth knockout. And as we had mentioned before, in terms of John, you have to take a look at who he's beaten now, what those other guys have done, and I'm impressed with how he stopped. Delgado. I tell you what, Arnie, he's got my vote, does the president, as a guy who belongs on any list of up-and-coming heavyweights. Well, speaking of lists, and we're going to get to a new feature here, and what a segue here. We have a new feature on Heavyweight Explosion this month called the Hot.